Hi and welcome back to Afternoon Literature. You're joining me today for another book report. So book report is the series that I do where I talk about either a book, a series or an aspect of books and I try to do it in under 10 minutes. Today I'm going to be doing a series review for the entirety of the Spellslinger series by Sebastian de Castell. Yes, I am missing book one. I'm missing book one because when I love and enjoy a book so much, I will try desperately to give it to anyone to get them read it. And so it is currently sitting at my goddaughter's house. Okay, so without further ado, here is my series review. Series review. <laughs> series review for Spellslinger. So, Spellslinger is a young adult fantastical series which follows Kellen, who is a jumped up mage just before he's about to do his trials to become a full mage. Now, within Kellen's world, you take place in these trials that you have been learning for your entire life, and if you are successful, you become a full jumped up mage, which is a full member of your community, respected and loved. And if you are unsuccessful, you become a Shartep, which is essentially a servant within that community and basically someone who is not magical and therefore not magical enough to take their place in the respected part of society. This novel starts out with this simple premise. Kellen, who comes from an incredibly powerful family, an incredibly respected family of majors, unfortunately is one of the least powerful of them and risks becoming a Shartep. Now in the society, Shartep are outcast and ostracised and Obviously, that is not the future that Kellen wants. And so he is desperate to try and pass his mage trials, but it's becoming increasingly more obvious that he is not going to be able to do this. But Kellen is clever. In fact, Kellen is so much more clever than the people around him that although he doesn't seem to have the magical ability, he definitely has the ability to think of a way around this. And so ensues the idea that Kellen is going to con his way through these trials. Now, when I originally picked up these, this series, that was so intriguing, it sounded so fun, it sounded like this whimsical idea of someone who comes their way through something, um, a few magical tricks and things like that, and a really, you know, good world. That is not what this is. This is going to be a positive review of the series, but the beginning is incredibly misleading. In fact, this is an incredibly expansive fantastical world, which focuses on so much more than this idea of just the Jantep and the Shartep majors. I'm going to keep this review spoiler free, but just be aware that there are some things I'm going to talk about which make it clear some of the directions that this series is going. So if you don't want to watch that, you may want to finish this video here. However, if you're happy to follow along with me, then I'm going to carry on and tell you a little bit about why this is such a good series overall. So, firstly, we have the sectioning of the books. Within the first book, it is split into four distinct sections. Each section tells the beginning of a little story, um, and it's very focused and very clear. Um, one of the other books, for example, which follows a different type of people, follows the Argosy. Um, and in following the Argosy, you see the sections where it tells you a little bit about their way of life. So, for example, you get a lovely, beautiful cover page, which is based on the idea of cards. And then you get a little bit of information about the way the Argosy lives. Each one of the novels is sectioned in this way. It's either sectioned using something to do with one aspect of the culture that you're going to be introduced to in this book, um, an aspect of mythology from the books, or something to do with the cards that become incredibly important in this. And I think that's a really cool way of structuring the book. Not only is it structured in these distinct sections, which makes it incredibly easy to read, but it also provides you some bigger background on the world, and it shows the fantastic world building and cultural building that is done within these novels. That's my next point. This is huge. So each one of the books takes place within a different culture. Book one takes place within the Jamtep culture and you learn so much about that initial world that Kellen knew. But as Kellen starts to learn about the world outside of his own initial Jamtep culture, you also follow along and learn it with him. By having us go on this journey with Kellen and learn it with him, we are saved from info dumps, which is fantastic. And we are also given the chance to immerse ourselves within these worlds. 
Each book in this series takes place within a completely different culture and by taking place within a completely different culture leading up to the final book which then brings all those cultures together we start to understand the political intrigue, the idea behind it, we start to understand the way the cultures intertwine and the rivalries that have been between them and why they may have built up or been there. It's a really interesting way of exploring the world and looking at it. We do go on this journey with him because he becomes a traveller along this time and that is fantastic and an aspect of this that I really enjoyed. The idea of adventure and discovery of a new culture every time to learn about it is something that I find fantastic. Now the political intrigue in this is huge. It starts out in the first book where as Kellen is trying to take these John Tep um, trials he ends up meeting the Queen and so becomes involved in those political machinations and this carries on much further. The other main aspect of this is the idea of the Agassi and the way of life that they live which is a very nomadic way of life but they are also massively involved in political intrigue while trying to remain outside of the initial cultures and societies in which these are involved. Um, by seeing that we are starting to see the way the machinations are entwining, how each culture is influencing another, how the politics is coming across and some of the shadowy conspiracies that are happening within each aspect of the politics. If you like political intrigue you will love that in this novel because it is entwined frequently throughout leading right up to the final resolution which I adored. I loved the fact that you could easily see how all these threads had been brought together and how they've been plotted throughout the course of the series, not just the course of one book. This is a found family narrative. Relationships are created along the way. Kellen makes new friends, he discovers new people, he discovers new societies that he potentially has a place within them. In the first novel he feels displaced and removed from his family and like he has nowhere else he can go and nothing else he can do and so the rest of the time he kind of strives to find home, to find a place where he belongs um, and along the way what he creates is a wide net of family and friends and a very very core secure family unit. This comes through his friendship and relationships with the main characters that are in there um, through Ferris, Nathenia and Rikus and it's so obvious and so wonderful even though Kellen will say throughout constantly that I belong nowhere, I have no place, I have no home, by the end of it he massively realises that this family unit is so much more important because sometimes we don't have a good base, but found families are something that is there to help us and we can create our own love, our own family and our own home in that. So that brings me to the relationship between the characters. The relationship between the two main characters that you'll follow the whole time through this series is Rikus and um, Kellen and they are wonderful. Rikus is hilarious. He is grotesque, gruesome, vicious and mean but also sarcastic and funny and incredibly witty. I really enjoyed the humour in there. I also enjoyed the ambiguity, the mentor relationship that you see between various Parfaits and Kellen and then the hints at romantic relationships you see along the way but also the fact that the, the characters within this are definitely their own people. There is this constant theme for all of that everyone is on their own path, everyone must make their own way, everyone must become their own person and only once you are your own person on your own path and understand that can you truly be willing to be with someone else and give yourself to them and I think that is brought out between the relationship between Kellen and Athenia in a wonderful way and I loved it, I really did enjoy that aspect of the novel. This is a brutal world. <laughs> And it's a YA novel, but especially as you start to get towards the end of the series, incredible cruelty happens in this novel. And it's really important to know that before you go in. It's not all light and fluffy. There definitely is a massive amount of world building in this. And it's a quite adult on the scale. The beginning of the series starts off very young YA. Um, the end of the series, it definitely grows and you're looking at the older end of YA. So if you are looking at giving this series to someone who is younger then you might want to 
got staggered the books out for them um, in order to allow for that maturity to develop. But essentially we are going on a journey. This is a Bildungs Roman. We are following this character as he grows and you see that growth within the novels but also within the subject matter. The brutality starts at the beginning but it gets more gruesome and grotesque by the end and you do see viciousness and there is definitely gore within these novels. So overall I can happily say that I absolutely adored reading these. Um, following Kellen and his family and the relationships that he makes was incredible. It was really fun. I laughed and I cried throughout the novels which was vital but I also didn't get bored by moving from place to place it keeps everything a little bit fresh the plots are important um the intrigue is definitely high within this world and so it forms a fantastic young adult series that I think is incredibly underrated and should be more appreciated so that is my serious review of Spellslinger. If you liked this video and want to see more book reports, please give it a like and then subscribe to my channel because I post one of these every week. I would really love to hear what you thought of the series, so please comment below and have a good week.